Good evening, teacher. Good evening to you all. Thank you. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today? Doing great? Pretty nice, pretty nice. That's good. What about you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. So it is okay. a new day, so we are ready to start. Okay. <laughs> so um, welcome. And once again, thank you so much for the ones that are always on time. That means that you're showing um, a commitment that you want to learn English. So thank you so much for always being on time. Uh, well, while the other ones are connecting to the video conference, and um, we're just going to wait so just one minute to see what happens. All right. So guys, as you see, uh, well, I think that you saw the message that I sent you today, like, like afternoon or morning. I'm not pretty sure the time I sent that message, but uh, if someone is here uh, and if you saw your name there and if you didn't text me privately, and or if I didn't talk to you, I just want to tell you guys, please keep on working on the platform because um, we're getting some instructions and that's the, all the information that I need to tell you. I have been checking some of your um, exercises. I know who is working and, and who is not working for the ones that are working thank you so much for your commitment with the platform and for your commitment to yourself because at the end of the day you're the one who wants to learn english and if you practice and if you do the exercises that will obviously help you out to know a little bit more about this amazing language so with that being said guys let me see how well do you remember the model verb so I'm going to ask someone randomly to see how well these people remember about the model verbs. So let me see. Um, Stephanie Roxana, can you tell me the 10 model verbs that we have in the English language, please? The model verbs are should, can, in out of in May and I can't remember the other one. Okay, it's okay. I'm just checking. It's okay. Do not worry about it. So Katya, tell me which model verbs do you remember? We have 10 in English. Which one do you remember? Or which ones? Okay. Can, um, who, mm -hmm. my, mm -hmm. um, should, child, would, or to, um, will, Mm -hmm. I don't Must. <laughs> exactly. Those are the ones I was looking for. Thank you. Um, and I also, I'm also doing this because I want to check if you have been studying the pronunciation of those model verbs. So let me see. Um, Mr. Joaquin, I just saw that you just connected. Thank you. Can you tell me, please, the 10 model verbs that we have in the English language? Mm 
Mr. Joaquin, did you hear what I said? Heard of me? I don't okay. listen to you. All right, all right. Okay, so um, I, I said that if you can tell me the 10 model verbs that we use in the English language, I'm just checking right now just to see if you have or studied that pronunciation. Let me hear you. Go ahead. Let me see. Um, um, oh. The model verbs? Yeah, model verbs. Tell me the ones that, which okay. ones do you remember? Go ahead. Can, uh, could, mm -hmm. my, mate, uh, mm -hmm. will, show, shall, um, mark, and out, 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 out. <laughs> okay, okay, it's okay. I'm just checking uh, if you have studied the pronunciation. So let me hear you, Karin Melendez. Go ahead. Thank you. Can, okay. Can, could, may, might, will, would, must, shall, should, ought to. Thank you. Very good. That was very good. Ele Elizabeth de Amaya, let me hear you. Yes, teacher. Modal verbs. Can, could, may, might, will. Could, sad, should, must, auto. Okay. We're going there. Eunice Ramirez. Eunice. Hello. So she's frozen. I cannot see. Hello. I cannot hear you. Can you hear me? I cannot hear you very well, uh, Eunice. Probably Hello? there is a problem with the uh, with the signal or something like that. Carla Lima, I see that you have raised your hand. Go ahead. Okay. The modal verbs. The modal verbs that I remember are can, may, must, shall, will, uh, have to, who, should. And used to. Okay, let's see. Basilia, I want to hear you. Can, could, my, must, ought to, only that. All right, all right, no problem. So, um, Please, guys, uh, try to always keep on working on the pronunciation. Please try to keep on working on that. But in general, I can see that you remember some of them. It's okay. It's not necessary that you can remember them all because we just saw them yesterday and the night before. But at this moment, in the general, like in the general test I just did, it was kind of kind of good. Some pronunciations over there that we're not that good, but it's okay. So with that being said, today we have something that is very important. Like for example, if some day first get you, you won't have a problem like that, but um, today we will have, or we will study the vocabulary about problems with health. So today we will see some words that we can use when we go to, a, to the hospital or when we have any kind of difficulties or if you, if you feel sick or something like that, today we will learn it, okay? So let me go ahead and share the screen with you and we will start with this topic. Let me see. All right. Okay, 
As I just mentioned to you, today we will see vocabulary about common health problem. Health problem. The word salud, we pronounce it something, a clue or a tip, un consejo that I want to tell you. Every time or most of the time that you see the letter TH together, you have to pronounce those two word, two letters, I'm sorry, as the letter Z in Spanish. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Cool. So, uh, yes, well, okay, perfect. So uh, it means that every time or most of the time, there is some um, like some words that do not follow this rule, but most of the time, or there's some exceptions. But most of the time, uh, when you see a TH, you will pronounce it como la letra Z, el sonido de la letra Z in Spanish, in Spanish. So we will say health, vocabulary about health problems. And we will start about the most common ways to ask someone, someone's health. We have some questions that we can ask when we want to know uh, information about someone's health. So we have the question, how do you feel? Or how do you feel today? This is the first question that you can ask when you want to know about someone's health. So number two, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Question number three. Is everything okay? Is everything okay? All right, so question number one, how do you feel or how do you feel today? Question number two, how are you feeling? How are you feeling or is, is everything okay? So, uh, those are the three main questions that we are going to ask in order to ask someone's health. Those are the main ones. So how are we going to know the positive and negative ways when it comes to uh, asking about someone's health? So you can easily say, I'm fine or I am fine. I feel sick, not so good, not so good, not very well, not very well. I don't feel well, I am sick. Those are positive and negative answers that you can give to these three questions. For example, if I ask you, Joaquin, how are you feeling? I'm fine, teacher. You're fine, very good. Let me see uh, who else. Candida Reyes, if I ask you, how do you feel today? I find happy. You're happy? I All right, cool. So, those are the most common answers that we have in order for you to say that you're fine, that you're not so good, that you're not very well, that you don't feel well, that you're sick, that you feel sick. Those are the most common answers that we give to these three questions that we have over here, okay? So let's continue with that. When you see or hear that someone is not well, you can ask, what's the matter? What's the matter? For example, 
If someone, let's let let's take an example. If I ask Karen Melendez, how are you feeling? Or how do you feel today? And let's say that Karen Melendez tells me, okay, you know what, teacher? I feel sick. I feel sick. So I I just heard she said I feel sick. So now I have to ask her. I have this question, what's the matter, Karen? I could ask her, what's the matter? Because I just heard she told me she is sick. So I can ask her, what's the matter? Or I can ask her, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why? Because I just heard that she said I felt sick. So I want to know the real why is she feeling sick? So what's the matter or what's wrong, okay? So please guys pay attention to all these details because on, on, on Monday, we will have a kind of practice. We will have a kind of practice where I won't, I'm going to need that you know all this information in order for me, well, in order for you to get that practice in the right way. So let's suppose that if the person wants to say what is wrong, they may give you the reason why they feel in that way. So in order for you to give an answer, to give an answer of one of these two questions, when someone asks you, one of these two questions. Let me give you the same example. Let's imagine that I ask uh, Karen Melendez and I ask her, Karen, how do you feel today? And let's suppose that she tells me, you know what, teacher, I feel sick. So I want to know a little bit more about why is she feeling sick? So I come and I ask her, Karen, and what's the matter, Karen? Or I could ask her, what's grown, Karen? And to give an answer to all these two questions that we just saw, we have to follow a structure. And this is a structure that we have. We have a subject, you know, are you with they, he, she, it, all right? We have uh, the verb have, in this case, in order for you to give an answer, you will have to use the verb have and has. Okay, let me ask this, Claudia Rivas. When do we use the form of the verb has? With which personal pronouns do we use that form? Uh, repeat, please, teacher. I'm all right, so, listen. all right. We have uh, two forms of the verb have one that is have and one that is has. So I want you to tell me to which personal pronouns does has work with? How um, I has a for uh, third person. And what is the third person? Uh, he, she, all right. Okay. So I keep hearing. Okay. Thank you, Claudia. So um, I have heard that some of you todavía pronuncian the personal pronoun ella como she. In the English language, we do not pronounce the personal pronoun as she. No. We say she, she, like if air goes through your mouth and through your teeth and you get the air through your teeth and you say she, she, that's the way we say it. Please, for the next time, if I ask you about something about the personal pronouns, do not say she. Do not say chi. We say chi, okay? For the next time, be careful. 
So as I was saying, we have the verb have in order for you to give an answer. So let me see, Sandra Araceli, explain me with which subjects or with which personal pronouns does the form or the verb have works? Well, we use, well, we conjugate. Uh, mm -hmm. Have with I, we, you, they, all right, in has. In the first, the first person and the third person, the, the first person and the second person of of a. Um. Not, not the plural, but singular, singular, and and then with the plural, they, we, you, they. All right, we perfect. Use. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. guys. Following this structure, first of all, subject, second, verb, have or has. Yeah. Now that you already know with which personal pronoun you're going to use these forms, you already know that. Then we have the preposition, a or an, a or an. And then we have the health condition. So I can say, I have a headache, I have a headache. Or I can say, she has a, she has a sore throat, she has a sore throat. So let me ask someone, let me see if you know this information. Um, Katia Monterrosa, do you know with when do you have to use the letter A, and when you have to use and? The letter A is used um, before uh, bo vocal. Vowel. Vowel. Very vowel. And, and the AN is used before a uh, consonant. OK. Let me tell you that that is wrong. That is all the way opposite to what you said. That is the way opposite. We use and when we, when we have a vowel and we use a when we have a consonant. Mm -hmm. That's the way we use it. But thank you so much. So, Following this structure, we have over here, I have a headache. She has a sore throat. She has a sore throat. Do you know what a sore throat is? Dolor de garganta. Exactly. I have a sore throat. So this vocabulary that we are learning today will help you in case, for example, you go to a hospital and you don't know how to say some word or any of your relative is kind of sick. And let's say that you, that you travel to another country and in that country, they do not speak Spanish. They only speak English. So this information will help you if one of your relatives is going to a hospital. So you are going to be able to uh, to speak with someone, to have a conversation, and to do it in the right way when you know all those type of um, structures when it comes to health problems. So um, if there is no questions with this structure, we are going to continue with the next one. So something very, very important. This, yes? Can, can you repeat uh, when you, we use a and a? Because my nephew can. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, oh, okay. He's talking, I'm sorry. All right, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, okay, so we use and when we have a vowel. We use and when we have a vowel and we use the letter A when we have a consonant. So you say that the way opposite. You told me we use A when we have a vowel. Yes, and, I, and I say it. <laughs> yeah, the way opposite. But now it is totally different. And, 
for vowels, letter A for consonants. Okay, so okay, you. you're welcome. So as you can see here on the red letters we have over there on the screen, it says, this structure is commonly used in American English. So it means that in British English, that will be something really different. I am going to explain you both because I need you to know the difference. You don't know if someday you are going to travel to England or any other place in Europe. So it will be better for you if you know the difference between they both. So keep this in mind. This structure is only used for the American English, not for the British one. So if there's no questions with this one, let's go and see what happened with the British English. And the British English, we are going to have this structure. What is the difference between the one that we just saw with this one? Simple, we just add the word got. Most of the time, British English people, they will always use the verb have with the word got. So, Following the structure, we have subject. We have the verb have, once again, conjugated, have and has, two forms. The word got. The articles, A and N, and at the last part, the health condition. Yes, so in British English, this is structure is commonly used in British English. So instead of saying, I have a headache, British people will tell you, I have got a headache. Yes, or she has got a sore throat. That's the only difference, the word got, that's it. But it's very important that you know, because as I mentioned to you, you don't know if in the future, um, you will have an opportunity to travel to any other country and this will help you to get or to interact with someone that speaks uh, British English. And if we don't go that far, if we don't go that far, here in Central America, there's a, there's a country that speaks British English and that is Belize. In Belize, they don't speak American, they speak British English. So it's very important that you know both differences. That is really simple. As you can see here in this one, subject, verb, have, a, n, and health condition. This one, subject, verb, have, plus the word got, a, n, and health condition. That's it. There's not a big difference. So if, if there's any questions so far, so far so good. Miss yes, teacher. Sandra, go. Yes, um, well, uh, I have a, a question about in the, the, the last, the first, uh, from the first, um, in the first uh, words that you, you told us, the most common ways to ask about someone's health. health. All right, let and, me go back. Uh, what I, yeah. Let me go back. Yeah. Um, are these three? Yes, yes. In I, I want to know if, if it is correct to ask, are you okay? Are you okay is gonna be the synonym or synonymous of is everything okay? It's okay if you it, it's okay if you say are you okay? That's the synonym of, of is everything okay? So if you um, ask, are you okay? Or if you ask, is everything okay? At the end, you will still have the same answer for both questions. All right. And now in the in the second one, when you say, when you see or hear that they are not well, then you can ask what's the matter or what's wrong. And we mm -hmm. can, can we ask what happened to you? What happened to you? So these phrases, what's the matter and what happened to you, those are syn synonyms, yes, synonyms. So there's no problem if you use some of them, as long as you know the reason or the purpose, why are you asking those questions? 
then it's okay because they are synonyms. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, teacher. Remember in this, uh, in this case, those questions that you are asking, it is to keep a conversation alive, to keep a conversation. Because what if I just ask you, how do you feel today? And you just tell me, mm, not so good. And all of a sudden there's a silence and you don't know what else to ask. And you're mm -hmm. okay, like that, okay. But what if you ask and what's the matter or the question you said, what happened? That will keep mm -hmm. a conversation more alive and you will have a conversation with someone. That is what we are trying to do, okay? Oh, all right. Thank okay. you very much. Welcome. So any other question? Someone else has another questions or everything is getting clear at this point? Everything's clear. Perfect. So let's continue with that. So here we have some other questions. And there's more questions that you can ask as the one that Araceli said, there's some question like, like, like their synonym of these questions. But here in this chart, we have the general ones, the most common or the ones that people usually use to talk about this type of health problems. So we say, how are you? If I ask you, for example, um, let me see, let me ask someone. Mm. Keila Lopez, are you there? I feel good. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right, cool. If I ask you, uh, Keila Lopez, how are you? I feel sick. Oh, you feel sick? All right, if you feel sick, yes. what, what will be the next question, Charlie? If she says she feels sick, what will be the next question? Charlie? He is not there, apparently. All right, Karen Melendez, if she said she feels sick, in order to keep the conversation, what would you say? What's the matter? What's the matter? That's cool. So, thank you so much. So, let's see. Let me give you the pronunciation of these words, because I need you to... Something that I love to do with my students is to help them to pronunciate the words in the right way. Why? Because I remember when I was learning English, I didn't have a, uh, like a great experience. Like when you talk with someone in, the, when someone in the native language, they will always ask you to have the right pronunciation of the words. And if you don't do it, that will be kind of embarrassing for you because they won't be able to understand you even if you know what you're trying to say. Bless you, Sandra. Thank you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, so. By the way. <laughs> all right, so question number one, how are you? How are you or how are you? Yes. Next one, how are you today? How are you today? How do you feel? How do you feel? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Is everything okay? Is everything okay? So what I want you to be clear is that when we are asking questions, what did I say last time that is important when you ask a question? What did I say? Then we have to stress the last word. Stress or intonation. That's the same thing. Stressing or intonating well, intonating. it is 
the right way you have to do it. Why? Because if I ask you, how are you? How are you? It, I, I'm not making an intonation or I'm not stressing someone or I'm not stressing some words. I'm just saying, how are you? You could probably understand what I'm saying because you might know a little bit about the, the, the English language. But what if I tell you, how are you? Or how are you? See, that makes the difference. Intonation and the right pronunciation, stressing the words as, uh, as Araceli said. So let me, let me help you to understand this chart. We have there some positive and negative feelings. Yes, if I say fine, that's a positive. If I say sick, that's a negative. Sick, good, awful, awful, that's awful. Great, terrible, fantastic, fantastic. Miserable, miserable, excellent, and not so good. I will repeat it one more time. Fine, good, great, fantastic, excellent, sick, awful, terrible, miserable, not so good. Do you pay attention to that? So let me see if you're paying attention. Jenny Glorivel, let me hear you. Fine, good, great, fantastic, excellent, sick. Excellent. Excellent, sick, awful, terrible, mm. Mi miserable. Uh, miserable. Miserable. Miserable, not too good. Okay, we don't say awful, we say awful. Awful. Awful, okay. Awful. Uh, let me see who else. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, Josue Mauricio, let me hear you. Fine, good, great, fantastic. Great, great fantastic, excellent, sick, awful, awful, awful. 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 Mm -hmm. A terrible. 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 A miserable. 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 Not so good. Thank you. Go, Stephanie, then Katya, and last one, Eunice. Go ahead. Um. Me, Stephanie Roxana, or yes. the other Stephanie? Is there another Stephanie? Oh, yeah, Stephanie Ramirez, right? Yes. Yeah, by okay. you, Stephanie Roxana. You, then Katya, okay. and last one, Eunice. Fine, good, great, fantastic, excellent, sick, awful, terrible, miserable, not so good. Very good, very good pronunciation. Next one. Fine, good, great, fantastic, excellent, sick, awful, terrible, miserable, not so good. Okay, it's not miserable. Miserable, it's miserable. Miserable. Miserable, okay. Eunice. Hello, teacher, can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Fine, good, great. Fantastic, excellent, awful, terrible, miserable, not so good. Very, very good. Very good. Thank you so much for participating, guys. All right. So, so we have the questions here. For example, if I ask someone, how are you? Or how are you? You can use a positive or a negative feeling. Let's say that you, your, your answer will be, I am sick, 
I am sick or I am sick. The contraction, I'm sick or I am sick, okay? Is that a, that is a negative, right? What if I ask the question, how are you today? It's up to you, depending on the way you are feeling, you will use whether a positive or a negative. If I ask you one more time, how are you today? The sentence says, I am good or I'm good. Okay, so if I ask, how do you feel? I feel terrible. I feel terrible. Okay, next question. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic. I'm feeling fantastic. And the last one, is everything okay? Is everything okay? No, I am not so good. You see, or you can say yes, everything is okay. Or you can say yes, I am excellent. It's up to you, you decide. Depending on the way you feel this day or the way you feel it, that's the way you're going to, to answer. Positive or negative? So any questions so far or someone that might have any question at this point? No questions so far? No, teacher. Perfect. No. So no here is the little conversation that, that you can ask or that you can make with someone now that you know all the information that we just saw. All the information that we just saw, it is this little conversation, for example, you ask, how do you feel? Not so good. What's the matter? I have a headache. I'm sorry to hear that. You see, we have just this little conversation. Lo que hemos visto desde the first slide till this point, it is this little conversation that will help you to interact with someone else. So here, I will help you or I will teach you how to pronounce some um, health problem because we will see a list of health problem. And we will start with the first one, an allergy, an allergy. An allergy says that is a medical condition that causes you to react badly or feel sick when you eat or touch a particular substance. Say an allergy, an allergy. Next one, asthma, asthma. Asthma, it says that it's a respiratory condition where spams in the lungs cause difficulty in breathing. Asthmatic uses an inhaler, inhaler to calm the spams. We say it one more time, asthma, asthma. Next one, backache, backache. It says that it's a prolonged pain in the back. One more time, backache, backache. Next one, broken leg, broken leg. It says that a broken leg, it is when a bone in the leg is broken, broken leg. Next one, cold, cold, cold. It says that a cold is a common viral infection which causes mucus to run from the nose, gives a sore throat, and often includes sniffing. Do you know what a cold is? Resfrío. Resfrío, resfriado, resfriado. 
if you don't understand any part of the vocabulary or, or if there's some word that you don't understand the meaning over there, ask me so I can tell you. Do not stay with the doubt. No se queden con la duda. Do not hesitate. No duden, verdad? Ask. So, one more time. Cold. Cold. Cough. 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 It, this is very simple. Like when you cough, cough, cough. It says that it's the act of spelling air from the lungs with a sudden sharp sound. Sudden sharp sound. Say cough. And here we have we have the other ones. We have other health problems. Those are very common. For example, we have the first one, diarrhea. 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 As you can see there in the British language, there's just one little difference and that little difference is just the letter O that you add. As you can see, in the American English language, we spell it like D-I-A-R-R-H-H-E-A. -H -H but in the British language, we spell it like D-I-A-R-R-H-O-E-A. -H -E yes, that's the only difference but the pronunciation still remains the same. Diarrhea, earache, earache. Earache is this, is this, right? When you have a problems or that you have pain in the, uh, an ache in the ear, earache, fever, fever, flu, headache, Headache, hardborn, hardborn, heartburn, measles, 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 rash, sore throat, sore throat, and the last one, stomachache, stomachache. As you can see there as well, we have a, a little difference between the American English and the British English. What's the difference that they just separate in the British English, they just separate the, the word stomach with the word ache. But it, in the American English, they put it together. That's the only difference. But the pronunciation at the end still remains the same. So, I will repeat it one more time, and then I will start to ask one by one. So, diarrhea, earache, fever, flu, headache, heartburn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Okay, let me start asking. Uh, Jenny Glorivel, go ahead. Diarrhea, heather, fever, flu, headache, uh, irdo, y esa no sé. Okay, it, keep on going. It, it head, headboard? Keep on going, just do it the way you think it is. Uh, Misos. Mm -hmm. Ras. Uh, Surtrof. Mm -hmm. Stomachache. Okay, yes. thank you. We will see. Someone else, Karen Melendez, go ahead. Diarrhea. Earache, 
fever, fever, flu, heatgate, hairborn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomach ache. Okay, thank you. Sandra Raceli. Okay, diarrhea, um, earache, fever, flu, headache, heartburn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Very good. Karen Lima. Who do you say? Carla Lima or Karen? Oh, Carla Lima. I'm sorry. My bad. Okay. My bad, Carla Lima, I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. Diarrhea, mm -hmm. fever, flu, headache, heartburn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joaquin. Okay, teacher. Diarrhea, irate, fever, flu, Headache, heartburn, missile, rush, fart through, stomachache. Okay, thank you. Basilia. Diarrhea, urge, fever, flu, garbage, heartburn, miss, rush, sore throat, stomachache. Okay. Thank you, Josue Mauricio. Diarrhea, irrash, a fever, a fever, flu, heat dash, herbo, mister, rice, a sore trap, stomachache. Thank you, Reinaldo. Reinaldo, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, no. Uh, diarrhea, Irish, fever, flu, headache, harbor, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Thank you, Katia. Diarrhea, Irish, fever, flu, headache, Hairborn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomach ache. Thank you. Stephanie Roxana. Diarrhea, earache, fever, flu, headache, hairborn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomach ache. Eunice. Diarrhea, earache, fever, Flu, headache, hairburn, misled, rash, surgery, stomach ache. Thank you. Ana Yancy Orellana. Diarrhea, erect, fever, flu, headache, hairburn, misled, rash, sore throat, stomach ache. Thank you. Elizabeth de Amaya. Yes, teacher. Go ahead. Diarrhea, urge, fever, flu, headache, herbum, misle, rash, sore throat, stomach. Okay, thank you. Candida Reyes. The rice, fever, flu, dash, fervor, mislo, misli, fried, sore through, stomach. Thank you. Herlin Laines or Erlin Laines. Okay, diarrhea, irrash, fever, flu, health, herbor, misles. Rush, sore throat, stomach ache. Thank you, Liliana Melendez. 
diarrhea, headache, fever, flu, headache, heartburn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Thank you. Ricardo Mancilla. Um, diarrhea, headache, uh, fever, flu, headache, heartburn, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Thank you. Claudia Rivas. Hey, Ria. Hey, Rich. Fever. Flu. Headache. Carbon. Measles. Rash. Short stroke. Stomach pain. All right, guys. I see the most of you. There's like two or three, probably four of you that have pronounced the words correctly. I heard that some of you said diarrhea. We do not say diarrhea. We say diarrhea, diarrhea. We do not say heatage, heatage. No, 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 forget it. We said earache, earache. Or we can say edic, earache or edic, but no edic. Eso no se dice, okay? The majority or most of you heard, I heard you say edic. No pronunciamos como here, como el verbo here, porque we, don't, we do not have a letter H at the beginning. No tenemos una letra H al inicio. Decimos earache. Earache or earache. Next one, we say fever, flu. And the next one that is dolor de cabeza, we do not say headache. Porque escuché que la mayoría, quizás three or four say it correctly. But most of you were saying headache, headache. No, we say Headache, headache, headache. Next one, most of you also say that, la mayoría decía, heartburn. No, decimos heart, heart. El corazón, verdad, como decir corazón, heartburn, heartburn, heartburn. Measles. The next one, measles. The next one, we say rash, 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 sore throat, sore throat, and stomachache. The last one, stomachache. Okay, please be careful with that. Be careful with that because sometimes you could probably think that you're saying something correctly. But when it comes to pronunciation, you could probably be saying something really different that is not what you're trying to say, okay? Now, questions, questions for you. Do you all know the meaning of all these words in Spanish? No, teacher, I have a question. What is measles? Measles, measles is like sarampión o rubiola. We say it in Spanish that it will be, it is a synonym of rash because rash is como almost the same as sarampión, but it's como kind of an allergy, como una, eh, como Sarpullido. ronchita, sarpullido, that's it. Mm -hmm. Teacher, repeat pronunciation. All right. Me Let me tell you one more time, all of them, I will go one by one. Diarrhea, 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 earache, earache, fever, fever, flu, flu, headache, 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 heartburn, 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 measles, measles. 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 Sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. And stomachache. Stomachache. 
Okay, very good. So let me tell you, diarrhea is very simple. Diarrhea, right? Earache, dolor de oído. Fever, fiebre. Flu, gripe. Headache, dolor de cabeza. Heartburn, es como así, es acidez estomacal. Heartburn, acidez estomacal. Measles, measles es como sarampión. Rush, por ahí alguien dijo la palabra, I forget it. What does that mean in Spanish? Rush, erupción, sarpullido. Oh, that's it, sarpullido. Mm -hmm. And sure. so, yes? Sure. In this, in this miso, uh, varicela, mean varicela? No, it means it's como sarampión. Oh. Do you know what sarampión is? Yes. All right. Kind of, right? Because not even in Spanish, there are some words that we don't know. And okay. stomachache, that's very simple. Dolor de estómago, vea. Stomachache. And sore throat. Eh, Katia por ahí, she said that it was dolor de garganta. <laughs> Sore throat. All right. So now that I ask one, that I already said the pronunciation a lot of times, I will ask someone randomly. Let me pick someone. Jenny Glorivel, thank you so much. Daria. Okay, no, no, no. Yes. All over again. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Okay. Very Di good. Diarrhea. Eat it. Or oh, eat it. Mm -hmm. Fever. Flu. Get it. Heartburn. Correct. Measles. Rash. Mm -hmm. Sore throat. Throat. What did I say when we have Sword. the... No. When we, when we have the TH, what's the sound that you're going to do? Sor. Cuando tengamos TH, casi siempre vamos a hacer el sonido de la Z en español. Throat. 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 Sore throat. Throat. Sore throat. Throat. With the T's at the end. Sore throat. <laughs> Very good. No, I know that you will do it. I know that you will do it. Sé que todos lo van a lograr, okay? At the moment, it can be a little bit difficult, but now, then you will see it like very normal and you will speak like very, very fast. Let me get someone else. Reinaldo, thank you so much. Then goes Katia, then Stephanie, and then Stephanie Roxana, and last one, Eunice Ramirez, go. Diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Kirish. Fever. Repeat it again. Flu. Fever. No, no. The one before. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Okay. Kirish. Mm -hmm. Fever. Flu. Mm -hmm. Headache. No, no, no. No, I don't remember what this uh, word. What can, is some, can someone help him? Araceli, help him, please. Yes, headache or oh, headache. Correct. Headache, headache or headache. 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 Yeah. Harbor. Heart. No, 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 no. Harbor. Harbor. Correct. Heartborn. Missile. Okay, Rash. good. Mm -hmm. Right. Sore throat. No. Stomachache. No. Sore. En esa, en la primera palabra es sore. Sore throat. En la que van a hacer el sonido de la Z. En español es TH. Sore throat. Sore throat. Okay. Very good. Next one. Diarrhea. Eric. Mm -hmm. Fever. Flu. Headache, harbor, measles, rash, sore throat, stomachache. Very good. Next one. Uh, 
Stephanie. Stephanie Roxana, hello. Here I am. Okay. Sorry. Diarrhea, earache, fever, flu, headache, heartburn, measles, rash, sore throat, yeah, stomachache. All right. And the last one? The stomachache. Yeah. Thank you. Go away, Wanisa. Diarrhea, earache, fever, flu, headache. No, no. 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 I don't remember what is the pronunciation. Can someone help her? I can help. Go ahead. Yeah. Which word don't you pronounce well? Either. Dolor de cabeza. Ah, headache or headache? Mm -hmm. Headache. Headache no, no, no. Or headache. Headache or headache? Headache. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. No, do, do not feel sorry. It's okay. We are all learning. It's okay if you make mistakes because if you make mistakes, that's the way you will learn. Go ahead. Try to do it one more time. Headache. Headache. Um, headache. 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 Okay. Continue. Airborne. Hardborn. Misless. Rash. Hardborn. Misless. Rash. Measles. So good. Measles. Measles. Ah. Measles. I'm sorry. Measles. 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 <laughs> no, it's okay. Measles. 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 Mm -hmm. Rash. Mm -hmm. So throat. Mm -hmm. It's so my cage. Okay. Thank you so much. Guys, I didn't even fill the time. It is 9-7. Sorry for taking you that much time. But, well, the last thing that I want to tell you, please, guys, please, the ones that already know that are on the list that I just show you today in the morning in the message that I sent you, you already know that you have to work on the platform. It is not for me, guys. It is for you. Yes? Okay. So uh, thank you so much for your commitment. And thank you so much for attending to the Sorry, class teacher. today. So, Sorry to uh, interrupt you, teacher. But I had ahead. a question. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember last time that I asked you that I wasn't in the group? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I think that I for Carla, Rebecca, Lima, Cáceres, is that you? Yes. And Jose Reynaldo, just a question. Are you, did they already add you to the group or they didn't? No, teacher, they didn't. Reynaldo, okay, let me see. Reynal, Jose Reynaldo Juarez Merino? Yes, yes. Did they add you or they didn't? Um, don't understand. Sorry. Did they add you to the group or they didn't? Uh, yes, I I added. What oh, group? I did. To, to the WhatsApp okay, group. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, last time Carla, we received some instructions about this because I reported this problem to to Human Resources, and what they said is that. Uh, they send you all an email, right? They said that they send you an email and, and that email, it's supposed to be a link that, I, that it will redirect you automatically to the group. I don't know if you received that email. Carla? Well, I think I haven't. 
because I have been checking my email uh, account and I haven't seen anything of that link. All right, probably you are going to receive that email on the notifications part because most of the time it goes to that part, to the notification part. So uh, what I can do for you, let me see. Um, let's see, I'm going to one more time. Because last time I asked someone to of human resources and they said that they are they were going to fix this problem. So what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to get in contact right now with someone of human resources and I will request them to send you an email because apparently you didn't receive that. And um, if in, in case um, they add you like tomorrow or something like that, I will send you, when, whenever you get into the group, tell, okay, it's me, Carla, please send me the slides because I already sent some slides to the group so I can resend one more time those slides, okay? Okay, teacher, thank you. All right, so-, so have to go. Bye. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Kai, for being here. Teacher. All of you. Teacher, sorry, sorry. Yes, go I ahead. Have, lo puedo decir en español. Go ahead, I yes. Can. Sí puede enviarme alguna sugerencia de cómo practicar este vocabulario de dialogar, porque tengo, tengo bien poco vocabulario para... All right. So what, what I can do for you, I can look for some vocabulary like common vocabulary and I can look for you on the group and I'm going to send you that personally but just in case someone else wants vocabulary as well so I can send that through the group in general so you can start studying on that but that will be up to you lo necesito así como practicar como que estoy hablando con otra persona aunque no esté la persona porque eso es lo que siento que me falta bastante all right, all right. No Ricardo, did you did you say something? No, no, no. That that's good. Okay. All right, all right. So thank you so much, guys. If there's no any other questions, so I will have to say bye. Take bye. care. Um, enjoy this weekend, and I will see you till Monday. Okay. See you Monday. So have a nice weekend. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher.